SDS2 Fortis-C is constantly moving forward. Some releases have critical modifications that will affect the user deeply in a positive way. This release of SDS2 Fortis-C 202006 is one of them. Before I get into the meat of things, I will mention that we have brought back layers into the bill of lading. Turns out I was wrong. Layers in the bill are used by some companies. We also had to make some corrections to layers after adding loadables to the trailer deck. We have found that depending on how the Tecla model is built, you can have group assemblies nested in member assemblies, which would cause some materials to not appear in the Fortisee staging model. It could also cause some shop assembled fasteners to be added to incorrect loadables. This has been fixed now. This bent plate was not appearing in previous releases and the studs were on the column. In 2020.06, the problem is solved. The path for the project is now visible in the title bar. Now that the potatoes are done, let us get to the meat. Import has taken on a new form of functionality. In version 2020.05 and below, import also acted as an update. This is no longer the case. Why the change? This new form of import tool will satisfy several process requests. For example, having two different buildings on a site and wanting to have the trailers containing loadables from each of the buildings. Or projects that have two different detailing firms working on the same project. For example, one company is on the primary steel and the other is on a secondary steel. Let's first review 2020.05 for comparison. There is only the IFC import tool. When we import the next IFC file, we can see that the model is updated and the changes are reported. What you have is the initial import and after, only the update. No ability to add different models. Now, in release 2020.06, notice the two tools, the familiar import IFC and the new update IFC. I'll start with the import. Import has some additions to the screen. We see the model ID and the relocate. Each imported model will be assigned a model ID which acts as a name for the model. It can either be the file name by default or one you input it as I will do. Note that the models from earlier versions will be named generic model one. This model ID is for updating a model and it will be addressed later in the presentation. Let's import the model. When we import, you're adding a model. Any loadables being added from the importing IFC that have a duplicate GUID of a loadable in the current staging view will be reported and omitted from being added, preventing duplicate loadables. Loadables will also not be modified in the current model. This is the import tool, not the update tool. Also, with the import, any loadables that are not present in the IFC file will not cause loadables in your model to be removed. Once again, this is not the update, but an import. Here is a picture of the 2020.05 release with the update for a comparison. Now I will use filters to see the two different imported models. Remember, items with duplicate GUIDs will be removed. I should probably explain what a GUID is. It is a unique number that is assigned to each loadable. Think of it like your social security number. It's unique to you, or should be. Now that we see the difference between the versions of the import functionality, we will move on to the first example I gave where I will add a first portion of the structure and then use import to add the next portion and the next portion and so on.
Let's throw in a Tecla model off on the side to be the other building on the site. By the way, we do not have the ability yet to move and rotate imported models. We're not building a BIM model for clash coordination, but just a model for loading trailers. Relocate will add the imported model 50 feet from the bounds of the current model in the staging view. We'll have fun with this option later. On to the update IFC and model IDs. As mentioned earlier, each imported model will have a model ID. The model ID will be used to select which model is to be updated. This model ID can be viewed in the tooltip, important properties, and be used with filters as seen earlier. We will also see this model ID property later when we get to exporting the connected model to IFC. So, let's take the models I just added in. We saw that they are all separate IDs or names from the previous filter demonstration. If I were to update the model, I would have to create an IFC of each of the previous imported sections with their modifications to be sure I'm getting the correct results of the members being removed. Before I commit to the next operation, this picture shows you the loadables that are contained in the IFC file. Notice the circle loadables that have been added and removed. Now, I will run the update with the model we have just seen in the picture. I'll select the Test 1 Part 1 model ID. As you can see, when I update this model, the deleted loadables for Test 1 Part 1 are being removed. This is because the Test 1 Part 1 was selected to be updated. The loadables that are supposed to be removed in the other imported models, Test 1 Part 2 and Test 1 Part 3, are not being removed or updated. They are being left as is because they are part of the other imports. This time, I will select the Test 1 Part 2 model to show you what happens. Now, only the deleted members that are in the Test 1 Part 2 section are gone. So how can I get all of this updated correctly? We'll see that in the Rename section. I would like to tie this section of import and update together with a quick workflow demonstration. I will use a second example where two firms, A and B, are assigned different structural elements. One firm with primary steel, the other firm with a secondary steel. Each firm will be creating their own model. This one, from the detailer A, is doing the primary steel in the model. This one is from detailer B, who is responsible for the stairs and rails. We see that some of the primary members were duplicated due to the stair connections. If these models were unique, there would be no duplicate GUIDs for their stair supporting members causing duplicate loadables. They can easily be determined though using filters. I will finish with an update IFC of the primary loadable model, that's the one that did the primary steel, Firm A. Using the undo and redo, we can see the loadables which had their depth updated and the added loadable. A natural workflow may be to add models sequence by sequence as the submittals come in, like we did earlier. Then down the road, you'll get a revision of all the sequences combined. So how do we combine all these models together since we cannot always easily control the models we receive from external detailers? Let me introduce you to my little friend, Rename Model. Rename model under the file pulldown allows you to rename an individual model or if more than one model is selected, you can rename and combine the models as one model. We will take these three imported models and combine them. Note that rename can be undone, 
but once you close the project, you are not able to break the models back apart. You may want to use the Save a Copy. Using filters, I can see that we have one combined model ID. Now when I update the combined model, it is updated correctly. Now, if models are imported using the relocate, positioning them at a distance, you can still rename them, thus combining the models under one ID name. A message will be displayed about some potential strangeness or problems. Let's update this model. Notice the loadables were relocated because the imported model is a culmination for all the loadables and the original model's location is used. Often users will find that they may want to add their own properties to filter on or to be used in the exported model. For example, they may want to create their own erection sequences or break down to daily work packages. Under Tools, select the Add User Properties. You can select the type. Notice the examples below that are in plain English. Select the area that you want to apply the user property to, and either from the right click or the tools drop down, select Edit User Properties. Properties will appear in Filters, Tooltips, Important Properties, and the exported connected model. You can add them and edit them from the staging view or the loading view. Note, the creation and editing is subject to undo and redo as well. The culmination of this lengthy presentation will be the export of the connected staging model as an IFC 2x3 containing all the original properties plus the model ID, trailer loads, and any user properties. From the file, select Exports and select the IFC model. This can be opened in any software that can read an IFC file, even on a tablet or phone with some applications. This is a great tool for the Erector to be able to view, for example, which loadable is on what trailer, and where it's positioned in the connected model, helping their planning and site erection. Combine this with the ability to export your individual trailers or bundles in 3D, and you have a powerhouse of information to be used at your fingertips. Thank you.